Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Saturday Morning Gaming Show. It is August 10th, 2019. I'm your co-host, Ryan, joined by... Your other co-host, Lobos. Lobos, thank you so much for being here with me. We're going to be playing Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island. This game was released in uh, North America, October 1995, for the Super Nintendo. Very late for Super Nintendo. A bug just yeah. flew in my coffee. <laughs> And before we actually get going, um, because I edit the podcast, I'm allowed to do this so sort of stuff. Wow. Uh, my wife and I are celebrating our two-year anniversary today. What? So, Congratulations. Special shout out. Love you, Netta. And uh, thanks for uh, putting up with uh, all this retro gaming stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. Cheers, retro cheers to that. Whoa. Break up the that was, um, that was an omen. Of that, was our no, that was our Elgato. <laughs> Sound station. <laughs> All right. So yeah, we're playing uh, Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island. And as you can see, we are watching the intro here. Basically, um, here's my summation of what's going on in the story. Okay. There's baby Mario, and then there's like a pile of rocks. <laughs> and they lose, like, uh, Kamek, the, the yeah. witch slams into the stork carrying baby mario in the pile of rocks uh the pile of rocks falls down no one cares nothing of <laughs> consequence was lost nobody cares and there's really no game here because oh my gosh mario is alive and that's really anyone uh the only All baby anyone, anyone cares it, about but there would if this pile of rocks did not get rescued there would be no luigi's mansion i mean pile of rocks is mansion so i've never actually played so. luigi's mansion me Maybe neither me neither but people rave about <laughs> well, it and i think see, I need to. nothing no one cares about well, it. well look i'm not no i'm not everyone so anyways th this game actually has some lore to it un yeah. unlike most well, Mario's. okay so just let's like... talk about lore because he opened uh, a map drops down with him and let's take a look at how many count how the many islands are on the map there are seven. Uh, there are seven islands on this map. There are only six islands in the game. Well, six worlds, which are subparts of a single island. Mm, yeah, because you see the you see the main screen, and yeah. he's walking. Every time you beat a world, he's walking around the same but island. The map is clearly showing a path. Maybe it's a path to a single island in the middle. I don't see, know. I thought you I just know. gotta. Anyway, uh, it cuts to Kamek, and Kamek is like, Ack, we got the worthless baby. Go get the other one. That's oh literally my God. That is, is literally this the whole what episode saying. is just bashing Luigi? <laughs> but, but that's what's happening, right? He's very upset. He's, he's yelling at his... I don't know what you call those little helicopter things that actually captured him. But, uh, uh, yeah, Kamek is, is legitimately upset that he didn't get he or she... He's upset about not getting both of them instead of just one. They knew they were twins... So, anyways, anyways, so Mario gets dropped. Wait, does he get? Yeah, he gets dropped, right? Yeah, to, um, on no, top. No, he Yoshi. doesn't. Um, yeah, yeah, they yeah. nab Luigi, the, the baby, yeah, and they drop Marsh, and then Mario. Yeah, Marshy, I, I said Marshy. Marshy. Marshy's not the <laughs> name of. Oh my god, this episode is on a great. We start. are very unprofessional. <laughs> we should redo this whole thing. No, this is perfect. Yeah. This is so exactly. oh, see, because there we go. Here's the title oh. screen. This is when the game actually starts mattering here. Uh, when right. We can start playing. So, right. uh, first and foremost, I I think um, I want to frame this discussion. Okay. Because, uh, and you're doing it right now. When we were finishing last week's episode, you were very like joyful. You're like clapping your hands. You're like, oh, yes. we get to play Yoshi again. Yes. So I, I had never played Yoshi's Island. Yes. And I started it and around, and we'll talk about this, the, the scene which did this to me, but oh, uh, around oh. world, it was actually uh, one four. Oh. I almost messaged you. <laughs> I'm like, we can't do Yoshi's Island. <laughs> I can't play this game. I hate it. It's, it's so um, bad. But I, it's uh, so like... Like, look how charming it is. Well, I, I, let me let me continue here. Uh, but and so I, I kind of primed you, and because uh, I know you love this game, and yes. I was like, I think we're gonna have very different conversations here, and I find that still very interesting. Um, but the way I approach this is very much, you know, the spirit of what our show is, Saturday morning gaming, is right. you don't always have the money to go out and get that other game, <gasps> and sometimes. You, Are you saying this is a game that you get and you're forced to play it and that's it? Oh, no. Or, or you go to the rental store and it's like, that's your weekend game. Oh, I, no. And so, so I was like, 
<laughs> I'm going to force myself to play this. Now I don't have to do all the bonus stages and stuff. Um, but right. like, that's my game. And, yeah. and I'm actually really glad that I did because this game grew on me. Okay, and so I by, by, I think, World 3, I started to actually really enjoy my time with it. So And then by World 5, you hated it again, probably, because that's, that's usually world, how world I go. World 5 is rough, yeah. But <laughs> it, 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 it takes a little bit of getting used to, and I think you almost need to approach this game not so much as a Mario game, but more of like a puzzle game with Mario elements. Right. So or a, an adventure puzzle game. Yeah. So, I mean, first off, uh, if you're listening and you don't know anything about the game, you play as Yoshi in this game, carrying baby Mario on your back. And you're like, okay, cool. I've played with Yoshi in Super Mario World. He was fun and everything. What? Cats. Oh, God. Uh, but the, the main, one, probably the one of the main things that be, becomes an annoyance is every time you get hit, you don't have health necessarily. Baby Mario will... F- fall off of your back and float around in a bubble and cry and and a timer will appear and you have to touch him or hit him with your tongue or an egg or something and get him back before the timer runs out otherwise he gets captured and it's game over all right now so we're getting to bert the bashful's fort and this is the level that actually almost made me quit the game now i will say that i was impressed with some of the things they do early on uh they have these chomp chomps in world two i think uh, oh yeah, yeah. And i think it was uh yeah uh-huh. the cave of chomp chomp rock i think no it's mm. watch out below that's what watch that's out the below the um they have these chomp chomps that come out from the background it's like a parallax background mm-hmm. and they come to the foreground and they actually remove sections of the levels that are they're coming down so that yeah, was man. really cool and then you come into the burt bachelor's fort and you have the wall is kind of moving out in a three-dimensional plane and can yeah, stomp man. you. The tech in this game is ridiculous. Like, but, at the time, it was, I was just like, what is happening? Yeah. There's, like, stuff is moving from behind the screen to in front of the screen. It was very cool. And, so but this is the area, I think, that really upset me. So we're not too far into the uh, <laughs> castle here. And there's these two fat guys. They look like eggs with suspenders. And... I just kept getting hit by him over and over and over, and I just kept dying, and um, and I was like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> Ultimately, I found out the, the annoyance I had. The, the problem I have with this game is it's very much a personal problem where you'll spend, let's say, 15 minutes trying to get the coins and the flowers and all that, and mm-hmm. then you'll move on to the next area, and you'll die because you fell into the lava or the spikes or whatever, and then you have to do that all again go back to unless you had actually point. found a, a checkpoint right there. right right and to me that was it was semi-frustrating because a lot of times you do these very skillful things and um it, it just some of the things were time consuming so right. that was my that was my biggest grievance i i i figured out that you know that was the thing that bugged me the most but after you get oh, good get good as mm, it were no i found it much easier to sort of sustain and not die right. and sort of um, get to the next checkpoint and so right and, and yeah. once i alleviated that then like the game was i could enjoy the game for what it was sure some might say this is the dark souls of yoshi games of yoshi i probably wouldn't say protagonist. that because dark souls is fun but <laughs> no, i can't, well, I, can't. So, I like this game so let's talk about some of the mechanics because we haven't really touched them too much so yoshi can eat enemies most of them if you once you eat them uh, you can press down and convert it into an egg. Mm-hmm. And you have a maximum of, I think, six or eight eggs. Uh, it, I think it's closer to five. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, it was, yeah. I never really counted. Sure. But you can then uh, hit a button to start like this aiming reticle that kind of cycles in a like a crescent moon shape, like 180 degrees. And it'll just go back and forth, bounce, bounce back and forth. And if you press the button again, Yoshi will throw an egg. And there's a lot of like ranged things that you need to throw eggs at, whether you're wanting to collect an item or activate like this little switch cloud uh, or just kill enemies and things like that. Um, And you can collect flowers and red coins, which by the way, each level has five flowers, 20 red coins, Mm -hmm. and then 30 stars. But the stars aren't really collectible so much as they are I mean, you do have to collect stars, yes. but it's more of a measure of you didn't get hit. Because yeah. every time you get hit, uh, you know, earlier we were talking about that timer mm-hmm. that uh, when when you get hit, Mario goes off and there's a timer. So that basically always goes up to 10. So when you have Mario on you, let's say that you got hit 
Yeah. And the and, and then the timer started going down and went down to five. You picked up Mario and the timer would go back up to ten. And that's yeah. like your base life, if you will. Right. The stars will give you up to additional twenty um, I don't know if it's seconds. I don't think it's seconds. It's some arbitrary value. It's basically seconds, yeah. but yeah. 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 So, so you can go up to 30, mm -hmm. but those don't recharge once you collect them. So it's basically, if you get up to 30 <laughs> stars, which is the most stars you can have, you basically don't want to get hit if you want to complete the level. Right. With 30. Yeah, and once the reason... Get, yeah, it can be rough. When you get that 30 and you're like, all right, I just need to go this little short path without getting hit, and then you get hit, and then you don't really have a source of stars again, mm -hmm. and you're like, well... Yeah. Gotta restart. And if the reason you want to complete the level with 30 stars and then five flowers and 20 coins is that you'll get 100%. You're basically mm -hmm. scored on your progress through the level. The progress being like the amount of collectibles you got. And mm -hmm. if you get 100 in all of the levels for the world, you unlock a bonus stage. Yeah. Uh, which I didn't do because that is very, very I didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's that, that's a lot of that's a lot of work to do that um you should watch the 100 percent speed run oh, at some point because it, it's insane it's insane anyways uh so there's eight levels per world every four levels is basically a castle level or a boss area like a mini castle yeah so one four will be like a there's a mini boss and then one eight has a proper boss but the bosses in this compared to like super mario world are so good i mean i love them they're very they're much more complex and than just jump on the enemy like three times or whatever and um, that's one of the things i do want to really commend this game for all the bosses are unique and i think what makes them unique and and actually much of the levels are the same way and you just have a lot of little toys to play with mm -hmm. there's a lot of mechanics that are new and are only seen for you know maybe one or two or three levels and so I could see someone that maybe came from Mario World that, you know, it's, it's a great game, right. but it is just like kind of a lot of running from the left to the right sure. and, and um, you know, jumping on enemies and stuff. But this one, there's all sorts of mechanics. There's uh, morph abilities. There's the unique boss fights. There's... Um, there's like egg throwing. Mm -hmm. there's... there's even enemies that will, will um, hit your eggs back at you and... Uh -huh. and so there's a lot of really cool things to play around with in this game. Yeah. I do want to give a special shout out to one of the levels we just passed, which one mm. seven called touch fuzzy, get dizzy. Oh yes. Um, so first <laughs> of all, I play a lot of binding of Isaac and one of the <laughs> items when you pick it up, it's a trinket. Um, so like a mushroom. And when you pick it up, it says touch fuzzy, get dizzy. Oh yeah. I never understood the reference to that. Oh, I always yeah. just, you know, binding of Isaac, I figured it's some weird. like stoner joke or whatever, <laughs> but, um, and I kind of wonder if Yoshi hadn't been portrayed as a stoner before that level. That certainly was the level that was like, okay, Yoshi. Well, not necessarily a stoner. Tripping. It's just so there's these these basically circular kind of cloud looking things that have little hairs on them and faces that just float throughout the level kind of randomly, and it's easy to hit one. And if you hit one or eat one. Um, especially if you eat one, he'll fart out like this cloud and then he just gets super high. His eyes are like bloodshot massive and the entire screen starts like undulating and the, the path underneath you even will, will move and it pushes you around and cause if you like lose your balance and it's crazy. Um, yeah, it's actually important to note that the, it's not just a visual effect that the level literally is moving. So if you're yeah. on a platform and it raises you might actually slide off yeah. and, and into a pit and die yeah it's 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 an impressive again more more tech to to praise in this game mm -hmm. but it's just notorious for its um yoshi it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> now it's uh, after that of course you have the castle which is salvo the slimes castle mm -hmm. and uh basically the way you beat that boss is you just throw eggs at it and it keeps getting it's so it's a big slime that takes up maybe half the screen and then and the slime doesn't hurt you he doesn't hurt oh, you at all yeah he just he bounces just, he yes. bounces around like yeah. an innocent slime mm -hmm. and you have to throw eggs at him and when you throw eggs at him little slimes pop off of him mm -hmm. um and those will hurt you but you're supposed to consume those to get more eggs and then you just keep like making them smaller and smaller and smaller. yeah in and general so. the bosses i felt were pretty easy they, mm. they they're just you know they were a nice little um cherry to the top of the level yeah i didn't find i think with the exception like one or two bosses might have killed me once but yeah they're 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 pretty 
are pretty easy. Compa compared to running through levels yeah. with like, you know, finding the next checkpoint and this and that, like, yeah, they're, 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 yeah, they're a treat when you find a new one. Now we're speeding along all the way to World 2 and we just made it to Bigger Booze Fort. This is a boss fight. Again, we're talking about toys and stuff like this. And while well, not a toy, I think it's a really innovative way to kill a boo. Mm -hmm. Because you're introduced to boos. If you didn't know about boos before, you certainly found out that they, they come at you when you're looking away. Mm -hmm. And so the first thing you do is you're like, all right, I'm going to shoot an egg at a boo. And uh, it goes right through them and you can't hurt them. Um, and you're like, okay. Um, because I see that when I'm facing him, he's translucent, so, mm -hmm. okay, obviously I can't hit him, but if I'm facing away, he is opaque, and it's like, oh, that's really cool, I get it right away. Yep, yeah. So that was, that was a really interesting boss there. Yeah, and you see, as you throw eggs at him, he gets bigger and fills the room, and so it gives yeah, and a little less room. I actually found that an interesting decision, because uh -huh. it became easier to hit him oh yeah yeah as he's bigger so it makes him more dangerous because he's he gives you less room to maneuver but right. you don't really have right. to maneuver around i would have liked to see what would what would this look like if he actually got smaller Oof. because it would definitely be more challenging yeah but they also kind of use that mechanic with the slime guy before mm -hmm. that's he, true he gets yeah. smaller and starts bouncing around yeah. faster so it's yeah but um <clears throat> yeah, and, and this uh, this area I wanted to call out. So we're in an area that had a wooden box, and below the wooden box has <laughs> some things you can break by by stomping on them. Yeah, it's a crumbly ground. Yeah, and, and so when I first saw that wooden box, I'm like wooden box, and I I, I butt stomped it, and I went right through the ground and killed myself. <laughs> and I can't help but laugh when you know it's like the designer knew what they were doing. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And uh, so I thought that was a, a fun little time. And I did find myself in many situations laughing at the ways that I would die because <laughs> I was like, oh man, I'm an idiot. Yep, fell for it. Now we're actually seeing one of the morph abilities here. The, um, the game actually has five morph abilities. So it's got the train, which we're doing right now. Yep. Which you basically can go on these 2D train, ta train tracks that are on the background. Then you have a car, which is actually only used in one level. Oh, yeah, we're going to look at it right now. Yeah. Uh, which actually was my favorite. Nice. We have a mole tank, which basically allows you to carve through that destructible train we were talking about just a minute ago. Mm -hmm. And you have a helicopter. And then you have... Oh, what a, was submarine. a submarine. A submarine, yeah. yeah. Now, I did want to say that uh, we had a poll on the uh, Saturday M game and Twitter. And 50% of people preferred the helicopter uh, over the other morphs so oh. i guess that's the i mean flying is always something flying's that cool humans have had a you know a desire to do and mm -hmm. so when you can fly it's pretty it's freeing and neat yeah um yeah man like as i'm watching this there's just so many cool little mechanics that they added that that weren't in super mario world mm -hmm. like oh my gosh like there's these little um like blocks of slime that that yoshi can jump into oh, yeah. and then he gets like stuck in them and kind of falls down um, and here we've got some potted plants which we're learning you can drop the potted plant to break it mm -hmm. which is very important for the next for boss, the boss that we're just exactly. running into yeah so this boss name is uh roger roger <laughs> the roger. potted ghost because why not uh <laughs> this was a fun boss because all you have to do is run to the right right um, so it's basically a, a ghost that's in a potted plant and he sits in the middle of the screen and on the left side, there's a, a pit and on the right side, there's a pit. <laughs> and essentially what you want to do is push the potted plant over to the right side. So it will fall. But meanwhile, there's two shy guys that are pushing the other direction. They don't have that much resistance. They, yeah. they just kind of slow you down a little bit, but it's really fun when you get to the edge and you see the other shy guys kind of fall the edge <laughs> yeah. first, you're like, all right, I got this, I got this. Yep. I think the only way you really get damage in this fight is that he will shoot some blue flames down at you, mm -hmm. and also occasionally the potted plant ghost will do this attack that doesn't damage you, but will push you, yeah, push and you. so it can push you off the left side of the ledge there. Yep. Again, not, not too hard, but... There are ways to get damaged. Um, I think I think one of the main things was they didn't want to make them too hard so that you don't lose all your stars or lose any of your time and then have to redo the whole level again. And ah, it just gets annoying. 
Um, oh boy, World Three. Welcome to Monkey World. Mm -hmm. Oh, the monkeys. Well, so when I started this, the monkeys. I started to have a little regret because the monkeys they don't damage you. Mm. <laughs> so you, I'm just like eating them because I'm like I I'm, I'm a functional guy. I want those eggs. And then I'm like, of should I feel bad about killing all these monkeys? Then they start throwing bombs at you, no. and you're like, okay. Yeah. Also, where did she get those bombs? What? <laughs> but here, here's a section I, I, was, I felt oh, smart. Oh, nice. So in the, one of the monkey worlds, there's a section where you can, uh, there's like a ramp going down into the water. And if you go to the left slightly and below the level, you can go into this bonus world. And I felt smart because there's a bunch of one-ups here. And this is a good opportunity for us to talk about the purpose of a one-up in, in Super Mario. So you want to tell us how one-ups work and why you'd want those, Lobos? Uh, well, they're extra lives. And whenever you yeah. die, you can continue uh, wherever on the last checkpoint that you were. Yeah, and that's important that it, you can only continue at checkpoints if you have lives. Sure. So if sure. you die, you will if you run out of lives you can restart the level you know like something in mario 3 would actually make you restart the whole world oh right yeah but uh in this one you just have to restart the level but you have to basically start at the, the beginning so mm. if you're uh strategic if you don't have a full five lives because i think i think it's five lives when you when you run out of lives and you restart you start with five so you that might want to just kill yourself early on get those five lives then start the level sure yeah and and at least when I played this last time, like early on, you can get a, a ton of one ups and mm -hmm. I find like it's more the later worlds that start to really you'll start to die a lot. And then... yeah, and to be frank, I actually started using save states at those points because I was sure. running out of lies. I'm like, well, this is really just a grinding thing. Right. Yeah. Know, save so... state. Same, same, same idea. Basically. Yeah. Um, so what we one thing we didn't talk about is uh, one of the collectibles uh is the sunflower little happy smiley sunflowers um that you just you, you shoot them with an egg or you run into them to pick them up at the end of each stage for each sunflower that you've picked up and they're not necessarily sunflowers there's flowers uh there's like this ring that you jump through that's like the end goal and when you hit that there's like a little roulette that goes around this circular ring and all of the um all of the flowers you picked up are uh, like arranged on this ring and if the roulette lands on one of the flowers you get access to a bonus stage where you get one of like a several mini games yeah, where you have the there's chance there's think four mini four games. mini games yeah uh, so you have a couple comments on that so the the roulette thing is a circle uh and i think they arrange it such that there's like a seed and then a flower and the seed and a flower right and so if you get all the flowers Again, I, I don't have the picture in front of me, but I think it's roughly mm -hmm. like a 50% chance. Or right. visually, it looks like a 50% chance for bonus stage. Right. Um, and for each flower, it adds like roughly 10%. So if you only have one flower, it's probably like a 10% chance. Two flowers, 20%. Right. So it basically looks like that. Sure. Uh, now, I, I thought it was a little... I wasn't a huge fan of that because when you hit the five flowers, you feel really accomplished, and that's cool. Sure. And... To not get the the bonus game really kind of felt like a like I was missing out. I felt really sad. Huh. Um, but once you got to the bonus game, you still might not win anything. So it True. was sort of like double random to actually get something. In fact, there's one where you can <laughs> bet your lives, and you might actually come out with less lives. Than you. So <laughs> also, I just want to comment that we have Baby Mario sitting at a roulette table. Gambling whoa, whoa, away whoa, whoa. Yoshi's lives. Whoa, whoa. That is... Uh, uh, look, that's... Don't, let's not, not talk about that. This don't is, gamble away someone else's lives. Especially if you're underage, is <clears throat> all I'm saying. Yeah. yeah I no, got nothing we, to I say. I think we just agree with that. <laughs> I guess you're sure. May, maybe just don't have your babies gambling, Nintendo. <laughs> uh, so, we, yeah, we just watched The Submarine a bit, which is pretty standard. You can... Swim underwater. You have an unlimited amount of torpedoes that you can. Well, you homing. have torpedoes. You didn't know you had torpedoes. What? You can just mash torpedoes and infinitely they home on enemies. Yeah, yeah. So I was just avoiding that everything. <laughs> no. That's a game changer. Yeah, man. Torpedoes. Uh, Wait, does a helicopter have any missiles or anything? I don't think so. Okay. No, the helicopter just flies. As far well, as so I know. the the only thing that is really dangerous with getting hit with the the submarine mm. is that you spiral out of control and the helicopter is the same thing where right. you 
you don't take damage, but you lose control for maybe two seconds, but then you fall to the bottom of the screen. And yeah. if you hit far enough under the screen, you'll actually just die. Yes. And so that did happen to me a couple times. <laughs> now we're moving into the mm. next boss here, which is Prince Froggy. Here's a little piece of trivia, which is cool. Oh. Prince Froggy is the only boss that doesn't actually get larger. Interesting. Yeah, but the player gets smaller. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's a really cool. But what happens is Prince Froggy eats you, uh, and then you go into a stomach. And I actually found that, so it's basically, yeah, you're in a stomach and you can see the uvula at, at the top and then mm -hmm. presumably in his intestines at the bottom. Like stomachs are. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually found if you just stand in the very center of the screen, mm -hmm. uh, there's these little drips of acid, I guess, that are going to the left and the right side of the screen, but they won't hit the center at all. So you just kind of stand in the center. And uh, Shy Guy, he, I guess the frog's also eating Shy eating Guys. Eating Shy Guys, like mad. The, yeah, dude. the Shy Guys come down. You can grab those, <laughs> shoot them up at the uvula, and then he eventually throws you back up. Yeah. Or, or something wait. else, because you go out the yeah, other Yeah, that's right. That's right. He doesn't start. <laughs> no, that's, and then, yeah. Yeah. Nintendo, what is going on over here? Uh, you know what? It's it's fine. Just, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, that is a very memorable boss for me, because, I don't know. When I played it as a kid, I was like, I'm inside a frog stomach. I don't know. It's so weird to me. But again, with just like the, the unique boss fights, like I, I have to commend it every time I see them. Now we're on, a, a, let's see. I'm trying to think of what, what level this is. It's one of the caves. Um, so there, I think this yeah. is the cave of Harry Hedgehog. Oh. And I got really stuck here because there's a, there's a specific door you're supposed to get to with a key. And I could see the key on the left side of the screen, hmm. but I couldn't figure out how to get there. And so I probably spent like 20 minutes searching this level. Um, and ultimately, I had to look it up on the internet. Turns out you actually have to run out back outside oh, back to track. where there's a bunch of monkeys. You actually start the level here, and there's two choices you can go. You can go up or down. I think if you go up, the level flows as you would expect it, and you probably want to get stuck. But yeah, if you go down, it was easy for me to forget that this key existed. So mm. anyway, you go up and uh, you you go outside and then back in. And sure enough, there's the key that you could clearly see, but you had no idea how to right, actually get right. there. And so that was the only <laughs> part in this game I really got stuck. Yeah, we have some people in chat echoing the same. Like, I also had to Google that. Like, Thank you for vindicating <laughs> me, folks. There you go. <laughs> um. Now we're actually moving up on oh, yeah, the yeah. Uh, naval piranha, which, by the way, as I understand it, if you throw an egg before the naval piranha gets large... By the way, the naval piranha is the boss of 3-8 of to the end of World 3. If you throw an egg at the piranha when it's small, it will actually die in one hit. Yeah, before you enter the boss room, you can see the little... Uh, piranha plant over there yeah. and he's small and once you enter the boss room there's a little cut scene yeah. and Kemet comes, comes, comes and sprinkles yeah. his magic dust and then he gets and, and turns into a big uh, big piranha plant but yeah you, you're in the water and you can jump up and throw an egg beforehand and hit it and it'll just insta kill it mm -hmm. which is cool um insta kill mechanics i'm always a fan of like little easter yeah. eggs like that yeah, and, and of course that has the uh, the age-old uh, indicator of a weak spot is there's a big <laughs> bulge with a bandage over it. Little bandage, like, oh, like, I've yeah. been hurt here before. It hit me in That's the bandage. The but they, they also do a good job of teaching the player that you need to be able, you need to bounce your eggs off the water, sort of like mm -hmm. skip it along the water. Yeah. Because uh, the flower has a giant head. It's a piranha flower, right? So it has a giant head, which basically blocks... Uh, the the weak spot from above, so you have to skip your egg off the water, and that will then come under the head, so you can then hit the weak spot and damage. And it. again, like I don't feel like this tech is used anywhere else. It's nope. just water skim tech for yep. for the sake of this boss. Maybe it yep. just happened to work, and they're like, let's make a boss out of this. But yep, they, yeah, it's, it's absolutely great, and and these fights are were a lot of fun to do. Again, not challenging, mm -hmm. but they uh, were fun because they. They made me feel smart, especially when you kill a boss in the first time. Right. Like, man, yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> Figure out the gimmick, ma yeah. master the gimmick, win. Yeah. Now, I do think that they do a pretty good job of having checkpoints right before yeah. the end of the boss. Yeah. And actually, so let's say that you enter a checkpoint with 30 stars, because we talked about if you get mm -hmm. hit, some of the stars go away. 
uh, when you respawn at that checkpoint, you start with the same amount of stuff you had before. So if you wanted to, if you wanted to use a life, so let's say that you went and, um, you're like, I want to beat this hundred percent and you have 30 stars and you get hit at a boss, you could just purposely die and basically restart at that checkpoint and still have those 30, um, 30, uh, right, right. stars. So yeah, yeah. Th that's a cool thing. It's, uh. It's kind of managing your life versus how much you want to beat it with 100%. Yeah. I want to do a mention. I think this is the first game, I could be wrong, where Yoshi can flutter. And um, so oh. Yoshi nowadays with like Smash and everything, like everybody knows it. You jump and you hold the jump button and Yoshi will kind of like flail in midair and, and which by the way hang is, time. It, it serves for jumping mario off yoshi so yoshi dies and exactly. then mario exactly yeah and that, exactly yeah. um there's actually we were talking about how you can insta kill the piranha plant that's kind of a little speed run trick um there is also frame perfect if right before if you hold jump and at the apex you let go and right before you would to start to descend, you hit jump again to flutter. You can actually gain a pixel worth of height. So oh. you can infinite flutter. Duh, 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 duh. And there are some sections of the game that, again, if you watch that speed run, is insane. Like, we'll talk about when we get there, but there's a whole series where you're on this like elevator and there's all these broken shells and you have to do this whole long elevator sequence. Mm -hmm. And the speed run just flutters through the entire oh, thing, cool. which is insane. That's amazing. Just one little pixel just do yeah. it over and over. That's cool. Yep, yep. So uh, we're we're on another fuzzy level. Um I'm trying to think of what uh I don't remember what the name of this level is, but it's in World Four, one of the first levels. Uh -huh. And this is where I realized that you could actually throw eggs and kill the the, uh -huh. the fuzzies. The that fuzzies, would, right. Um basically distort your level <laughs> and so once i learned that i was like this is great i can i can actually beat this but mm -hmm. uh again i think this is really fun if you try to do this area without killing them or eating them or touching them it's a really cool thing that's it's kind of like a hot potato or whatever where it's like just don't touch right right these it's, guys it's it, a it bullet makes hell very, kind very of diff yeah a yeah. mini bullet hell <laughs> here's another one of those kind of unique mechanics is these mm -hmm. platforms that have numbers on them and every time you jump on and then off of that platform, the number will decrease. And once it hits zero, it just disappears. Uh, so you have like limited uses for them. Um, and they use that in kind of fun, intelligent ways for like various puzzles and stuff and yeah. forcing you to like immediately continue or mm -hmm. things like and, that. And in this situation, they're used as sort of a safety net because you have some balloons that you jump on mm -hmm. and uh, you have to navigate both upwards and horizontally on these balloons and if you miss a balloon you basically have one chance because you'll land on one of the one uh the one platforms mm -hmm. and then that'll disappear so what i ended up doing was like instead of running across them all you jump across them so you have a couple of the platforms left right, over right. as like a, a, another safety net if you get <laughs> lucky there but um yeah this is me just trying to collect a bunch of those red coins when I played this game, you can certainly go through it and just try to get to the end. And yeah. I think you could probably chop the game. Like this game took me like 14 hours to complete. Mm -hmm. I think if I wasn't trying to get the the coins and everything, yeah, uh, it was probably like closer to 10 or hours or whatever. Yeah, and that's that's the way how I took this time because I've gone through and gone slowly yeah. and and it, yeah, it really extends the game's time, but not necessarily in a bad way. Like if you mm -hmm. like collection, yeah, it's, fun. it's great. But also, if you're trying to beat it in time for a podcast, maybe you want to yeah. <laughs> skip some of that stuff. Yeah. Um, but I did try to everything. I, you know, I tried to find everything. I didn't use the internet for uh, to figure out where stuff were. Because, again, this wasn't a completionist thing. It was just more just like, I'd like to get as many as possible, but I'm not going to stress out about not getting everything. Right. I think I ended up the entire game with like four or five levels. That I got a perfect 100%. 100 yeah. And that was great. And then my low, my low point was 53. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, I'm sure I had less than that because I just, you know, raced through it. Uh, there was this little uh, kind of gimmick to a level where, similar to before where the chomps are flying from the sky, now there's one coming from the left side of the screen and you have to just keep moving, otherwise he'll eventually catch you. And I remember always feeling so sad because once you get to the very, all the way to the right, there's, you get on this stone platform, which he can't chew through, and he just bites it and it shows his tooth crack. And he drops a little tear from his eye, and then he falls <laughs> to his death. 
Poor little chump. Yeah, but at the same time, chump is trying to consume you. Yeah, well, so, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, you still, it, you still got to feel Self-preservation. Also, I want to point out that he kind of did it to himself. You were just running. You know, you're just minding your own business. It's true. Run down, and he decided to run and smash his teeth. So don't feel bad. Mm. It's not your fault. Now, <laughs> the next boss we've got here is... The, well, it's in the Marching Milds. It's Marching Mild. Days. Marching Mild. Ma marching Milds Forest. Yeah. Fort. And the mechanic here is he starts out very large as a single thing. Think of it like a jelly, you know, for RPG. It's like a Kirby. Yeah. It's a walking Kirby. That they can't fly. Let's not mention Kirby on this. I, I was in a good <laughs> mood, and then you started talking uh -oh. about Kirby. Uh oh. That's, that's, oh, that, oh, we're that's gonna throw that on the point. retro yeah. list. Yeah. <laughs> so it basically it splits every time it splits and roughly, or you, you butt stomp it and then it splits roughly in half and then um, gets you know smaller and then eventually it becomes small enough that you can just kill them. And so eventually, so it goes like one to two to four, yep. and then I think it goes from four to, to the little ones, to eight, or does yeah. it actually go to eight? Yeah, to, to the, the no, I think eight little ones, okay. which okay. is like a standard enemy you've been fighting throughout the level. Yep. So it's like, oh, okay, cool. It was just a, I mean, and that's what Kamek like powers up with his magic. No, after dust. that, you you move on to a level, and they, this is when they start really ramping up the the difficulty yeah. with the moving platforms. But this is, I think, this is where I started to really enjoy the game because oh, nice. I. It was it's difficult, no doubt, but with the Mario with the Yoshi Flutter, it, it allows you to hit those moving platforms. And for some reason, for me, hitting moving platforms is a lot easier than hitting stationary ones. Because when I hit stationary <laughs> ones, I'm like, oh, I'm too far to the left, too far to the right, and and then I end up killing myself by second triple guessing right, myself. Right. Whereas if I would have just jumped and stayed, yeah, it would have I would have been fine. But you overreact there. <laughs> um, and so for some reason, I felt the, the, the moving platforms were easy to sort of uh, jump on and, and land. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we're in this area where there's a, is it Lakitu? Is uh, that? I've always said Lakitu. That's, I think that's right, yeah, Lakitu. And he's actually fishing yeah, for Yeah, he's babies. fishing for your baby Mario. <laughs> so also Nintendo, don't fish for don't, babies. Don't no, hook that's... children, please. Just don't hook them. Um... And then after that, almost immediately after that, you go into this area that has like this breakout. It's mechanic. breakout, man. It's an homage to Which breakout. Which is really great. But here's something that's weird is they teach you the breakout mechanic. And then like two worlds later, there's a boss that uses that. And so it, it just seemed weird that they, they teach you that mechanic and then they don't use it again until the boss later on. Mm. Uh, so, because uh, that would have been a perfect opportunity for you to be like, hey, this is how you blow up the... The breakout rooms and we'll talk about why that breakout stuff is important for the the boss when you get to it mm -hmm. but we did just get to hook bill hook bill the koopa yeah yeah so uh, koopa gets magic dusted and and turns huge also he, he kind of looks derpy he does look derpy but i mean koopas are kind of derpy uh, but i also I... want to point out that well let's talk about the mechanics and then i'll point it out sure yeah well i like this boss a lot um First of all, pretty much the first thing you do in any fight is like, all right, how do I get eggs? Because I probably have to use eggs. And so you're like jumping on him, also trying to damage him. And if you jump on his head, he'll just he'll cough up eggs. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> so that's what I wanted to bring up is um, I'm not sure if people understand how eggs are produced, but they um, don't come out of your mouth. I mean, out of Koopa's mouths, they do. And anyways, so you grab these eggs and you can hit him in the head and you, you hit him in the head and he'll like stand up a little bit because you're knocking him back and you uh, hit him a few times and then he'll be like standing up like teeter tottering with a little tear in his eyes always as always an innocent boss and you hit him one more time it'll knock him over onto his back and then you can stomp on his belly and mm -hmm. and then i think you hit him three times and then he dies mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah it's probably because he had like egg indigestion and you're just like <laughs> cracking eggs oh in God. his stomach Jeez. And then he has, like, salmonella poisoning. No, this is... Oh, my gosh. Um, All right, so after that, we move on to the snow, snow world. And when I entered this, I was like, all right, I knew it was coming. You know, it's Mario. I knew there's going to be a snow. Let's get uh -huh. it done with. Uh -huh. Snow world, at least it's not world six, because we always know world six is, or the last worlds are the hardest. <laughs> so I was like, great. Um, Dude, but actually, there's no real ice yeah, in this. There's, so. not, there's not a whole lot of, you know, slip sliding too much. 
But um, there is a mechanic that I know I love and remember fondly, which is skiing. Yeah, so we do have a whole section of skiing coming up here. Yep. As well as ski lifts mm -hmm. to oh I remember these snowmen yeah. yeah there's these snowmen on the ski lifts and so, you can yeah you can yeah. get rid of them and the snowmen won't hurt you but they will make you bounce and so uh, you'll basically try to jump on the ski lift that has a snowman and you it will bounce you off and you may fall off the the mountain there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so what you want to do is use an egg to shoot the snowman off the ski lift uh, and then also watch out for these little birds that are floating around as uh, <laughs> oh, no. they will bump you off. They will but the that. good thing is, you know, Yoshi can flutter. So if you get bumped off the ski lift, you can make it back to safety and, and then eat them and then <laughs> shoot them back at, at them. So, um, uh, one, on, one thing I wanted to mention is um, they also have a lot of like unique little shy guys in this game. So shy guy is like a standard Mario enemy. Um, I I guess from, more from like two. Two yeah, is when two shy guys is, really yeah. came around. Um, but there are there's fat shy guys, mm -hmm. which if you um, eat them, they give you a, a big egg. And if you throw the big egg, it like it kind of pow block every everything on the screen. Pow block affects everything on the screen. Um, there's st shy guys on stilts. There's a whole level themed after that. Um, mm -hmm. There's the, tall shy guys, there's like tribal shy guys, tribal shy guys, and they have spears. spears yeah, yeah. Them. But we are in your 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 skiing level oh, here. Yeah. I, I got a any like any game that has like a skiing portion. Yeah. I love I love like Final, Final Fantasy uh, Seven. Yeah, yeah, I love that skiing, okay, man. All right. <laughs> well, so this one I think was this thing I spent uh, the most try the second most tries of any sequence in the game. Oh sure. Um, because I really wanted to get uh, all the red coins and the flowers on this, and there's sort of three <laughs> there's three sections to the skiing, and so there are a couple hazards. There are rocks, and if you hit a rock, you tumble into an avalanche thing. And that basically stuns you for a couple seconds. Sure. You can't jump or anything, and that means you can fall down a cliff. There's also some some birds and some people that will sh uh, throw bombs at you. And so there's a lot of... Uh, Just like regular skiing, really. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's why uh, you see a lot of people, they, they break their arms because they're skiing, and their excuse is always that they hit a tree. <laughs> but we know. We know. We know. We know. Congrats on making that, getting that hundred points on that stage. Yeah, I love. I, yeah. I left that one on the video because I was proud of that because that was that was really cool. Also, I you know the skiing was a lot of fun. Though. Awesome, <laughs> and I think I'm not sure because I feel like I had to go into like a slightly special area to hit that skiing thing. Do you know if that was uh, crit no, path? no, that's crit path. Yeah, okay. as far as I I remember, yeah, because okay. at the end of it, there's the the ring and you finish the level. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So we're on, doing, on a level now where you are, there's this little, well, not little, he's kind of, he's a big ghost and he kind of follows the same theme of some other enemies where he's got these big angry eyebrows and mm -hmm. cute eyes, but he's got a platform on top of his head and he's located at the bottom of the screen and he's on a timer, but he moves throughout this level and he'll just kind of stand up to various heights, which gets you access to little pocket areas in, in this, in this castle and you have to use him to get all the way across to the right but also he'll sometimes he'll stand up and there's spikes that he would push you into so you have to duck um or other enemies and collectibles to grab so yeah and again that was a really good example of how they they sort of do the risk first reward thing because you can that thing's pretty easy if you just stand still there's a couple places we have to jump but right. if you just stand still you're going to make it through the complexity is do you want to go for those red coins because oh, yeah. if so you're yeah. going to have to race that timer because he'll 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 start moving when he's ready and if you don't have everything and back to the the uh, little elevator thing you are um you're going to be killed <laughs> and then after that you get to what do we we have is it sluggy i think it's sluggy yeah, this sluggy, the unshaven, the unshaven. <laughs> which I'm not quite sure about. I mean, cause I guess he's, he's got, got hairs. little hairs. Yeah, yeah he's okay. got hairs, man. But it's, it's essentially one of those jelly ghost things that actually brought us here without the eyebrows. And it has a, a big heart that's blinking in there. Mm -hmm. And you basically have to... I think it's like three or four eggs. You, you are sort of, each time you are um, putting divots in the jelly... At which will reform, so you kind of have to like accurately hit these over and over and over. Yep, in his uh, body, and he'll, yeah. it'll just cave in deeper and deeper until you can it exposes his heart, and then you can hit his heart. And he's like, 
blocking this entire hallway and moving slowly to the left um, towards you. And if, he, if you don't kill him in time, he'll push you off the, the ledge at the end. Yeah, actually, my first attempt, I was really hoping that I would have beaten it because it would have been more impressive on video here. Mm. But because it actually got me to the very edge, oh. but I was like two shots from hitting it. Oh, and no. I was like, oh, <laughs> I, but I, he ended up knocking me off. So uh, that was a lot more tense. But. <laughs> yeah, another another. Another uh, thing to praise Tech for, though, because I think that, like, deformation of his body based on where he hit him, like, yeah. crazy, right? Now, we're on the next level, or one of the next levels here, which I think is called Shifting Platforms Ahead. And, sure again, like one of my favorite levels. And we are actually introduced to these little... They're actually... Later on, there's a boss named Raphael, but I would, I'll call them, like, mini Raphaels. And you see them on these little miniature planet things. They, mm -hmm. They're just orbs, really, but they're moving around in a circle there. And that's a little uh, prelude to mm -hmm. the boss that you're going to be fighting a little bit here. Yeah, they're um, ravens, which, but they don't, they're not shaped like birds necessarily. They're kind of just fat, kind fat of oval-shaped yeah. with big noses and like two big clown feet. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. And they just walk around these little um, orbs. Yeah, like you said, like mm -hmm. just spheres of of ground or whatever and then uh we we actually are introducing even a new mechanic so again this we're in world five i think five seven or five eight right now and they just gave us another, another mechanic which is they they have these spinning arrows so they're circular and they spin and you can jump on them and we've used these in the past right um and they just kind of bounce. They go the direction that it's pointing, and if it hits a wall, it bounces. But in this situation, you can actually pick it up with your mouth right, right. and reposition it. So I'm like, where did yeah. this come from? Yeah, so yeah, when there's, the arrow is constantly spinning, but when you jump on it, it stops, and then it'll just go in that direction. So if you are trying to go straight up and you kind of accidentally land on it facing to the right, you can just jump on it a few more times, let it get a few more rotations, yeah. and nope. then... Yeah. We're on a section where I actually noticed a huge amount of slowdown. So oh, I'm not really? sure if this was an emulator thing or the game oh, legitimately wow. gets this slow, but there's a lot of stuff going on here. Huh. I, I don't... It's, I didn't get this far this time around. I've played mm -hmm. it through, through a few times. Yeah. I don't recall a slowdown in that part, but okay. maybe, maybe Yeah, people. this could be emulator. And then we get to Raphael, which I love this because he gets big, and he just comes in, he boots Mario out of the the, the boss stage. He's like, he, dude, he, he boots you into space. Yeah, he's like, like <laughs> you ain't even worth my time. I, I love this boss, too. This is another one of the super memorable ones. Just uh, the, the, the arena for it is really cool. Um, so, yeah, he... <laughs> He charges you and bops you into space. Yeah. And you go to this um, many, <laughs> many, many planet, kind of like Super Mario Galaxy. Well, right? I was actually going to bring that up. I'm uh -huh. glad you did because this, I, and I actually wonder, there are many boss fights mm. that do this very similar thing. You know, they, they do more like a drill. You're, you're, you're drilling through the planet uh -huh. and hitting on the other side, but it's pretty much the same thing sure, yeah. where there's, uh, there's these two pegs and what you want to do, uh, so it's a planet with, uh, think of it like um, at 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock, mm -hmm. there um, are these pegs. And only two of the pegs will be up at any time. Right. So let's say that it's at, you're at 12 o'clock. If the boss is at 6 o'clock and you're standing on a peg, you want to smash the peg down at 12 o'clock, which makes it come up at 6 o'clock. Yeah, yeah. And then it will damage the boss. And again... I wonder if, if Galaxy actually used this as an inspiration at all. Right, just running around little little planets. Mm -hmm. It's a really cool mechanic, and the camera just centers on the planet, so as you run around it, the camera just rotates, and, and it, it gives a cool little effect there. Yeah, and if, if, uh, if baby Mario gets mm -hmm. lost, he actually also orbits the planet yeah. there. So uh, Again, a, n a new mechanic. You didn't use eggs at all there. Right. Um, I, I'd say the majority of the bosses you do use eggs, but yeah, I think uh, most you do. But some of them are, are you, they'll make you go, yeah. hmm, "What do I do with this guy?" Then so now this is a situation. Let's watch here because I want to talk <laughs> about uh, really funny deaths here. Uh -oh. There's a there's a box on a ledge, and I a very <laughs> <laughs> there's a box on a ledge, and it's I can't figure out how to get to it, uh, but I know I can just barely stand on top of the box. Over and a gap. Over yeah. a gap. And so I do. I land on the box. I'm like, great. Now all I need to do is stomp on the box. And my hope is that once the box is destroyed, there's a platform below me. 
Uh, <laughs> there is not a platform, there so I not. blow up the box and yeah. basically just fall to my death. But that was a that was a one that actually made me laugh out loud. <laughs> I actually have no idea how to get that box. So any ideas there? Uh, you might be able to hit it with egg with an I, egg. No, I, I no, really? That, yeah, oh wow! Eggs won't blow up the boxes. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not yeah. sure. Well, I did notice that. So th this is um, this is the. Hmm, is it? I can't figure out what level this is. Scary Skeleton Goonies, maybe? Perhaps. I'm not sure. There's, um, we're back to, oh my goodness, dealing with uh, chomps flying from the background into the foreground. And these chomps, if, you, if you're in their path, they will just push you down mm -hmm. into uh, pits and yeah. they kill you really fast. When I was playing it um, the other day, like, I don't think it was on stream. Oh, we didn't even talk about Super Mario, yeah. like, yet. But, um, uh, yeah, when I was playing it the other day, I just kept getting pushed down. Like, the timing was so chance that I would just... And it was, it was fun. But what was really interesting is those chomps, when they come out, they will actually only destroy the terrain if the terrain is on screen. And so there's mm -hmm. actually one situation where if you want to get a flower, you actually have to run quicker to make sure you see the, the chomp coming down and, and going through the ah, terrain yes, to yes. get the flower. Because, again... It's a one-time thing, and so if you're not around, you just can't get that flower. It's it's basically embedded in the ground, and you, there's no way to get to the ground. Sure. But yeah, let's talk about Baby Mario here. And I actually really love these types of levels where <laughs> you have uh, an invincibility star, and you just have a bunch of spikes you have to run on. Yeah. I've made some levels some in Mario, Mario Maker, Maker like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I just love them because you have that... Especially when you're chaining the stars together. Yeah. Because you have that like exhilaration. You're like, oh, I hear the music saying my star is almost done. <laughs> but I can see the star, so all I have to do is go get that. Go and then you it. have that moment of safety. Yeah. So there's a there's a mechanic where if you find this little like bouncing star, um, you will I think Yoshi turns into an egg mm -hmm. and you take control of baby Mario, who's wearing a diaper and And he he has a cape though, right? He gets a cape, yeah, just like Super Mario World yeah. Mario. So it's like little baby Super Mario. And um, you start running around and he can just walk on walls. Um, so they a lot of times they give you curved terrain and you can just keep holding the, the direction you're running and he'll he'll do like, you know, follow the half pipe as it were and just uh, you keep running and there's a limited amount of time that you stay in that form. But it, if you find more stars, it extends that and you're invincible while you're doing it, mm -hmm. so it's it's just kind of fun to run around and run through enemies and do that. I, I just get a kick of watching baby Mario with his little cape that he can use to flutter around. Yeah, you can float around. I'm and, like, you know, I, I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, as you're running around with, with Mario on your back as Yoshi, Mario's cap kind of, like, bounces uh -huh. up and down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, it's kind of a There's adorable. a lot. There's so much attention to detail in this game. It's yeah. fantastic. Now, and you mentioned Su uh, Super Mario World, mm -hmm. and what's really interesting is this game was positioned as a sequel to Super Mario World, but mm. actually based on the timeline. Oh, sure. This, these, these are legitimately baby Mario uh, and baby Luigi. Baby it's not like rocks. Mario's kid. Yeah, baby rocks. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so yeah you are playing as baby mario or you're you're escorting baby mario self yeah now we've got to the uh, mid boss of world six this is tap tap the red nose fort and so <laughs> this is what i was talking about there's a breakout sequence right, and right. essentially uh, there's a platform that is these destructible blocks and you have to throw your eggs to essentially open up a pit of lava so when this when this uh, tap tap guy jumps, he jumps into lava instead of the the uh, ground there. Yeah, and so, so again, you, that was pretty cool. Yeah, there's just these egg spawners at the top, and uh, if you're not familiar with breakout, basically these there will be a bunch of bricks, and they're different color depending on how many hits they take to uh, to dissipate to fully get rid of. Um, green being like there's one more hit, and then mm. it's gone. Yeah, and so you just keep hitting them repeatedly, opening up a, a gap for the spike boy to to jump into now when i beat this boss he actually hit me and so mario came off my back and i know you can't complete normal levels that require you to go through the ring without baby mario on your back sure but i'm actually wondering if you can complete a <laughs> boss level with baby mario off your back have you yeah, ever tried I that i don't think i've tried it but okay. i'm sure it i'm sure it works. well i don't know because it would be is, interesting it is, to run out of time yeah yeah yeah, just, yeah. yeah. um so the other thing I wanted to talk about was the um, 
the the next level is uh just a like a scrolling it's level an auto here, scroller an auto scroller mm -hmm. and not a whole lot of levels do this um probably I think, for for the best I, I, <laughs> you know what are... I, I love auto scrollers i'll it, I know a lot of people like in Mario 3 everyone hates the airship levels. Right, I right. I love them. They're so fun. Well, yeah, I probably just have cuz anytime you get an auto scroller in a speed run, it's like uh, yeah, cuz you have to wait for that, the level. Yeah. So I think that's why I just generally have a mm -hmm. bad taste in my mouth for them. But this is a cavern that sort of loops in on itself and actually it's a pretty long level. I don't think there's any checkpoints at the very end of this sequence. There is a, I guess there is a checkpoint, but um, there's the, uh, there's like this little rock that comes down mm -hmm. and underneath the rock, there's this lava. And I'm, I'm like, I know if I step on this rock, <laughs> it'll probably take me to a secret spot. Right, right. But that, that whole sequence of going through this auto scroller probably yeah. takes two or three minutes. I'm like, I don't want to risk it. And sure enough, you know, as I, as the rock goes and it passes the point of no return, I see there's a doorway that you can get to. I was like, oh, yeah, I, I yeah. kind of want to know what's in there. Yeah, they, they have a lot of really cool like physics in this game. And the boulders that you can you can push them. And once they reach certain speeds, they can like uh, kill enemies that are along the way. And you can stand on it. And if you stand on it while it's moving fast, like it'll really quickly kind of mm -hmm. throw you off. Um, so, yeah. yeah. And but you, you can, can also use... slightly, you can just kind of slightly tow it so it will. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll go just some. Um, if you stand slightly to the left of its center, it'll mm -hmm. slowly start to gain momentum that way as you spin it. Yeah, a lot of really cool physics things in this. Yep. Um, so, the next uh, thing we're doing here is a level called Keep Moving. It's all caps with a bunch of exclamation marks. <laughs> Again, I love this level, especially. So, we were coming up to a part where it's a little bit slow. You're like, all right, there's a couple of platforms to jump on. It's one of those those platforms that have numbers on them. And so you jump on like the first three and you're like, okay, keep it, uh, you know, um, being careful here. And all of a sudden this big chomp chomp just comes out yeah. and you're like, and I love that, that <laughs> feeling of just like, I need to go and I'm just going to hope that I make it, you know, I might die, but you just got to keep going. You yeah. just got to keep jumping yeah. and trying to, uh, pl you know, hit that next thing that you see. <laughs> uh, and that's a real fun feeling when you manage to do it the first time. Yeah. And we've just entered the last level. Uh, again, there are secret levels that we didn't uh, cover here, but this is right. the last Crypt Pass level. This is uh, King Bowser's Castle. You start mm -hmm. out as a helicopter, and you just have to get to the castle where there's there's some birds that will knock you out of the air, and Kamek will occasionally come from behind you and try to knock you out of the air. By the On way, magic broom. Yeah, mm -hmm. and by the way, if you get hit. I think the stun is long enough that you'll instantly die. I don't yeah. think there's a way you yeah. can recover from that. Yeah, so it's basically a don't get hit level. But it's really cool because you can see Kamek fly in the background, and that's like your clue as to when he's coming from the left side of the screen. So if you can start descending, and then as once he gets on screen, he won't, he won't follow you. He'll just go in a straight line, so you dodge him like that. And then after that, you get into... What I, was, I thought it was a very bold choice for designers is that they have essentially a... Um, like a roulette of doors you can go into there's four doors i right. believe that you can you it, you can choose but it's kind of hard to choose so it's kind of just random mm -hmm. and you only have to go through one of them mm. and actually oh, right. i think you can you can only go through one of them and so does each of these doors have the full amount of flowers and coins that you need to 100 percent the level um I don't, I don't recall, actually. Because actually, there's one thing I wasn't clear on. When you complete a level, so let's say you complete a level and mm -hmm. you found three flowers and ten red coins. Sure. If you complete that level, do you have to find just the remaining no, two flowers? No, you have to find them okay. all again. So yeah. that's what I thought. Mm -hmm, so that mm -hmm. means that essentially they built four levels in one here. Because, <laughs> because you, can only, you can only go into one of these doors, and if they all have to have all the flowers and, and coins... Um, then that's really interesting. No, yeah. I didn't go through all four levels. Right, right. I actually went through about three of them because the first two I died on, uh, I died midway through. And some of them are easier than the other. Actually, the first one I did was just like pretty much all coins. So I was just like, here's a bunch <laughs> of one-ups, have fun. Yeah, it's like, great. Yeah. But eventually you, they all exit into this slow-moving auto-scroller with Kamek shooting his spells at you. And yeah, the spells will disintegrate blocks yeah, and turn yeah. into enemies. 
It's it's little Bowser's bedroom. So Bowser's also young because Mario's young. So they're all babies, and it's got this very like. I mean, the whole game has this crayon drawn aesthetic to it, but this room especially looks it looks like a like a baby's room. Um, and so you get there, and um, Kamek like calls out, he's like uh, Mario's here or whatever, and and then the the back uh, part of the screen kind of gets illuminated and you see baby bowser show up and he smashes kamek for not doing this <laughs> kicks him off then. i love that he has like a little rattler yeah um or a rattle and and he's kind of just like uh, I, uh that that donkey looks fun i want to ride it and, <laughs> Green and so donkey. i love that he's he, he basically starts the fight and he's riding yoshi it's I was so like, good that was so that was that was cute it's so good so he doesn't even really care about mario the only reason that you would lose is that, yeah he yeah. um he would ride you and then Mario doesn't have space to get on you. Now on this fight and actually that Raphael fight where we we're smashing the pegs, yep. I had a little bit of trouble because the, the intent here is you're supposed to smash the ground and then it will cause like this uh, ripple effect of yeah. the, if the uh, baby Bowser gets hit by the ripple, then he'll get, take damage. But I actually found it a little difficult to hit the the ground pounds reliably. Like, I, I don't oh. know. It's, sometimes I felt like I was pushing down. It didn't quite do it. I, again. Sure. I don't know if you had any issues with that or, or it, it can be easy to accidentally hit like left and right at the same time, maybe which, that's will, what it which was, will cancel. Yeah. yeah. It won't it won't yeah. do the damn. Uh, but yeah, so you, you hit him with your ripple three times and it's pretty easy and easy he falls fight. Over. Yeah. But then the most epic thing that yeah, this is probably the, one of the things that I remember the most. Like Kamek comes in and goes, mm -hmm. Oh no, I'm not dead. I'm gonna power up baby Bowser uh -huh. and so he does it. You get and, teleported. Yeah, and so now the the entire perspective changes, and you're behind Yoshi, who's looking into the background. And Which, you by the way, you can't really do anything. So there's some some cool music that I like to dance to. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The music gets like it's super. There's like this badass keyboard solo, and uh -huh. it's all like heavy rock. And there's yeah. um, I think balloons, right? That that yeah, that carry mm -hmm. big eggs that you pick up. And then your your reticle actually aims kind of vertically, and you have to aim your eggs to fly the right distance and hit him as giant Bowser is slowly approaching you. Mm -hmm. um, really cool. So I, I had not finished the game, but I did... Well, I was listening to your stream, and mm -hmm. you were talking about, oh, the, the end boss is really cool. Yeah, I'm like, oh, yeah. great. I, I can't wait to see what it's like. And <laughs> I, I wasn't really expecting anything like this, and this uh -huh. was... This was really cool. It was um, you know, another <laughs> good example of switching up. I was expecting the traditional Bowser fight of you have to get him to stomp into oh, lava right, right, or yeah. something. But um, <laughs> he, he basically, he's shooting rocks at you occasionally, and that is removing portions of the terrain. Yep. And so there's two times where he does that. The first time is pretty generous. You still have a very large, you know, you have a lot of level to still stand on. But after the second stage, it you kind of have just a very slim platform to to stand on. So uh, I didn't actually jump around. I let the, the eggs all come to me yeah. because I didn't want to mess up and, and fall. And fall. Yeah. So um, it was. And, and the only thing he really does at you does to you is he'll he'll put on the lock on target. You can see a fireball is coming at you, and then you just mm -hmm. have to either. You just have to not be in that position when the fireball comes. Yeah. Pretty easy to dodge. It doesn't seek or anything like that. Now, he also comes closer to you. So I was wondering if this is a situation where if you let him get too close, yeah. he'll come and like smash you or something. Yeah, something. I think he smashes all the platforms and you fall or something. I, I It's been a long time. But um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I love that fight. And every time you hit him with an egg, he'll get knocked back. He'll like bounce back a few steps. And then he picks up his speed and moves really fast to get to where he was before. And then he'll kind of slow back down. Um, so it's really like a nerve wracking kind of when he's like sprinting towards you and you're like, oh, gosh. Well, I know uh, that we, it's a little too late. We can't see it now. But the um, moon looked a lot like the moon you were fighting on mm -hmm. with uh, Raphael in the Raven's Castle. Yeah. yeah. So you basically rescue Yoshi. Um, no, you are Yoshi. Or, sorry, you, you, you rescue, rescue Luigi. The bag of rocks that yeah. is Luigi. Yeah. And now here's something that I, I'd love to lore experts to explain to me mm. is they are going to bring the twins mario and luigi mm -hmm. to their parents that's right mrs mario 
Because we know so, that it's their names are Mario Mario and Luigi Mario. I'm pretty oh, sure. Oh, is that? I'm pretty huh. sure that uh, Chad can correct me on that. But I. I but believe, what are their? Who are their parents? So their parents are somebody. Mar the, you know, n no unknown name Mario and also unknown. Well, well let's take a look because <laughs> what, what we'll, we'll see that the uh -oh. babies are delivered and we'll see two parents. And so we we all know Luigi is the tall one and Mario mm -hmm. is the short one. And so my question was, which, I mean, both parents could be large, but let's, let's assume that one is large and one smaller. Which parent is Luigi inheriting the genetics from? Now they're in a toadstool house. Yeah, so, so that, was, that was like, are they actually like toads or <sighs> we're just flipping open the, like, yeah, the whole know. lore book. <laughs> I have to, yeah, you have to do some real some real research to so what put I, all the pieces together. What I, I do like. notice, though, and we'll keep our eyes on this, when the door opens and it sees the two parents, you can see, I believe, the mom is on the right side, and you can see the mom's hands, oh. and they seem much... So So here's... here's but this doesn't answer oh. the question. So it's either so, that mom has very large <laughs> arms... Long arms, right. Or is shorter, right. and... And thus, that's why you can see the hands down there. Sure. So maybe sure. the dad is like the tall one and the mom is the short yeah, one. Yeah, I, I would guess that they're saying she's shorter, but who are they? Who, who, who are they? Where are they now? It's also worth noting that if you're watching the video here, the, that, this isn't exactly how the sequence plays out. What happens is that, that little bit with the parents actually happens after the credit screen. Sure. But I kind of switched the order just to <laughs> sort of um, speed things up there. Sure. So what if what if their parents are Mario and Luigi and Mario and Luigi are a couple and they have these kids and then and, and it's just a perpetual cycle of Mario. it's like Mario, a, it's a, like a time loop Mario and Luigi parenting other Mario's and Luigi's and so then that's the why there's so many Mario's like that's why you have so many lives mm -hmm. is because there's just a, a universe full of Mario's and Luigi's. All right, we'll have to, I'll, I'll simmer down. We'll take that. Um, well, uh, we have reached the end credits there of Mario. <laughs> okay. uh, actually, it's uh, Mar Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. So <laughs> that's going to um, pretty much wrap up that game. What, and, okay, final thoughts. What, what do you... Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. So I think when I was thinking about this game, I was like, um, this this conversation was going to serve for me to actually come out of it and understand did i enjoy the game or did i sure. not but yeah. actually about world three world four i actually already made a decision i enjoyed it I, I don't think i'd put this as like top 10 top 20 for me i'd put it at a solid b which is respectable mm. um but and i can certainly appreciate people that that think this is amazing because i could see there's a lot of cool mechanics and little toys to play around with like we mentioned so i think it's a solid game yeah I, I, I've loved the game since I was a kid and now like knowing more about like game design and stuff like seeing all the stuff they did on Super Nintendo I think it's really impressive we never talked about the music the music is amazing it. and many I think kids these days who have never even heard of this game now are familiar with the music because like the, the flower garden stage music which is like the basic overworld theme is now used in all sorts of like meme videos mm -hmm. so it's like People know the music and they know it's Yoshi. Well, I think I think that that we we at some point should do a uh, off episode about just great video game retro music, oh, so yeah. we can cover stuff like this. I feel like that would be a whole different podcast, practically. <laughs> um, well, uh, I did want to do a little bit of housekeeping here um, before we move on. So, just kind of a heads up to everyone. The, when when Lobos and I first started this this uh, podcast and and show, we very much wanted to just try it out. We, and I said uh, when we started, I was like, "Hey Lobos, let's do a five episodes, uh, and then after that we will evaluate the show to see uh, both how we are if we find ourselves continually interested in it, have time for it, and um, and if the fan reception is uh, large enough." Mm -hmm. To sort of like, do we want to continue or kind of call it at five? Sure, yeah. And so this was episode five. And uh, so we made a decision on the future of the podcast and show. And so Lobos, do you want to kind of talk about that? Uh, yeah. So um, Ryan came to me, really. I had always wanted to do a podcast. Um, and 
I had mentioned that a couple times and Ryan will watch the stream from time to time. And he heard that and knew that. And he had this idea originally to do this classic game podcast. And I was like, yeah, I'm all for it. And he was like, yeah, I'll, I'll handle like almost all the bulk work. All you got to do is make sure that like you play through the game and then we can talk about it. And I was like, totally. Yeah. Um, so on that note, um, in order to kind of continue it going and to add more stuff to what the podcast is. Uh, so, well, first of all, oh. we did decide that we're going to continue the podcast. Yeah, right? yeah. So we're, yeah, we're going yeah. con- to continue, continue it. We're, yeah. we're both enjoying it. Um, the fans seem to really be enjoying it. Uh, and so the next step. Yeah, the next step is uh, we're going to launch a Patreon. So um, we're going to have uh, a bunch of extra content potentially that we're going to add on to it um and it's it's not it's just it's just kind of help to help make it worth it for both ryan and myself to mm-hmm. devote the time to it yeah um and, and again it's not it's not something that we're like we need this in order to continue or yep. whatever it's but a, it's, a, it's a passion it's, project it's, yeah. but there's opportunities and we have a video here that will explain why we think that the patreon will add value to uh the show oh, so yeah. let's Actually, go ahead and let me and, add it here and let's see that. here um we didn't set this up ahead of time. Here we go. Media source. I know how um, to use this. What are we doing? We should just be able to drag the video. Over <laughs> no, there. Well, but it won't be full screen. Uh, well, this will be. This will make it full screen here. Um, oh, okay, I see what you're saying. There we go. Point. All right, here we go. Watch. Hello, everyone. Ryan here. And Lobo's here. Together, we co-host the Saturday Morning Gaming Show, a bi-weekly podcast and live show on Twitch. We cover a lot of your favorite games from 20 plus years ago. Some that we've covered already are Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. You know, I, this is like a, you know, midnight and you're just walking out into this dangerous world. Mm. Super Metroid? Well, do I need to be at the bottom of the ship or do I need to be at the top of the ship? So I start at the top of the ship because that's how you enter the game. I'm like, right, okay, right. Up, down, I Uh-oh. Don't know. Half-Life, except that I simply walk to the side of this tank oh, yeah, of and use my crowbar on the top of it and enough crowbar hits will just blow <laughs> blow it sky high but also blow you up with it so <laughs> the fan reception has been overwhelming and we're both incredibly grateful to be able to share with you the viewer our experiences from title screen to the credit screen each week think of it like a book club for games we want to expand upon this show with more options and ways to be involved Things like a Discord channel, where you can talk about the game of the week, whether that's sharing a screenshot of something you've encountered, or you need a little hint to get past a puzzle, but don't want the outright solution. Or perhaps you'd like a look behind the scenes to see how each show gets put together. We'd even like to get members of the Retro Twitch community to come onto the show with special guests. So please consider supporting the Saturday Morning Gaming Show. There are a lot of great rewards you can choose from, so peruse the tiers, See what strikes your fancy. One last thing. At 100 Patreon subscribers, a new live show slash podcast will be created. This will be more of a variety show where we talk about whatever we want, uh, probably gaming related, while also fielding questions from the viewers. You can find more details on that reward on the Patreon page. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Ta-da! Ta-da-da, ta-da. Yeah, so... Um, so the Patreon campaign is live right now. Oh. And I just want to let people know that there are some earlier bird specials there. So if this is something you're thinking about and you want to get in on the cheap, um, there's uh, some limited spots available for people that um, want to go. Um, and the Discord channel is up right now. So uh, we'd love to have you come in. I think the, the next game, which we're going to be talking about in a little bit, is a prime candidate for why we think this is going to be a, a really valuable... Uh, addition to the uh, podcast so before we move on to the next game mm-hmm. let's talk a little bit about the hall of heroes oh of course yeah Always. so as a reminder the hall of heroes is an opportunity for uh, other people to that uh, you know that are enjoying the show and want to check out the retro games and get some some sort of uh, street cred or retro cred with mm-hmm. it um Brilliant. to complete the game of the week submit an image with their name next to it and you can throw a little um uh a little uh description or shout out uh to be read on the air and so we do have a leaderboard of all that which we'll get to but let's go ahead and and go through the hall of heroes applicants for super mario world 2 
Yes. Uh, first up, of course, Gaming Steiner uh, says that was harder than expected. Still a lot of fun. Keep up the great work. Looking forward to the next challenge. It is. It is harder. Every time I play that, I'm like, oh yeah, this gets hard. It's a tough game. <laughs> it gets tough. Uh, Yoshi three fifty five. Always happy to have an excuse to play one of my favorite SNES games. Yeah, by the way, Yoshi was brand new to the Hall oh, of Heroes, so awesome. congrats, you're on the list. Yeah, Nonsense Mejia, hey Lobos and Ryan. It was good to go back and finish a game I used to play when I was younger. I did not miss Baby Mario's crying though. They really make you want to get that Mario back, because, <laughs> and it's just, oh my gosh, it gets so great. Anyways. Tobunaga, my first playthrough. So it was cool to see the origin of red coins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. And pounding and ground pounding that are so important in Mario 64. Thanks for the great show, guys. Hashtag Super Mario RPG win. Yeah, I am <laughs> a huge fan of Super Mario RPG. And I fun. have never yes, played I'm it. We're so. going to play it sometime. <laughs> Another good thing about the podcast in general is it, it gets me to play games on my normal stream. So people are like, yeah, play those games too. <laughs> um, Brisk Mountain. Uh, finished early this time. Just wanted to give a quick shout out to the, my beautiful and amazing girlfriend, Erica. Aww. Thank you for putting up with me while I play these amazing retro games. As always, keep up the good work. And Briss Mountain uh, came into my stream and was like, boom, I did it. Finish Yoshi's Island. All done. And yeah, it was, it was nice and early. Strutting the stuff. I like it. Yeah. And then, uh, oh. Uh, Herotham. Herotham. Yeah. It's a little hard um, to see at the bottom there, but. There we go. Uh, haven't played this one in many years. It was good to go back. Thank you, Herotham. Great. And I spoiled it, but yeah. our leaderboards... Yeah, let's start at the bottom there here. There you go. Uh, why don't you start? Sure, tied at 10th. We've got Kihaku, Splove 1, the Tenchi Senpai, and the Kyle Mac. At with... number 6... Oh, sorry. No, I was going to say with yeah, five, 5 points. points. Yeah, at number <laughs> 6 with 10 points, we have Yoshi, 355, Lulu, Kachu, Jazz Never Sleeps, and Dog Type, all with 10 points there. At number 5 all by himself, Tobu Naga with 15 points. Number three, at 25 points, we have Nonsense Magia and Harotham. And at 30, sitting up top, nice and pretty, Brisk Mountain and Gaming Steiner holding up. Yeah. Um, so I don't think we have any solid details, but I feel like there could or should be a way where you can kind of get a few extra points. Not necessarily like first person to do yeah, it. because We got to figure we something out to, to make it sure it's not always the same people at the top. I mean, we certainly love to see them, but we want the people that are maybe like at five or three to be able to overtake that. So we're still talking about how to uh, shift this up. Um, I think one of the things we may do is, is split these off into seasons. So at like season two, we clear the leaderboards and right. we introduce some sort of new yeah. rules. Yeah. I also want to comment that there's uh, looks like there's a space for one more person on the leaderboards, and then that's it. Everything is after that oh. is then is all competition. So uh -oh. no more freebies after that. Yeah. So that that is another reason to have seasons so that somebody like our top ten won't just or. Yeah top however many isn't just stuck there and mm -hmm. you'll yeah. never have a chance to get back on the leaderboard yeah. so so let's talk about how we can get on the leaderboards for next episode yes by playing a game that i'm very fond of and grew up with shadowgate <laughs> yeah shadow great great game uh, i think great. this is again one of the reasons we wanted to have a discord channel is i got stuck many times and i found it hard to find resources on the internet that were that didn't outright give you the solution. Right, so just right. a little tip to verify like, okay, I'm not stuck here. I, I have all the items I need. Um, it was super valuable. So please use that discord, ask uh, Lobos, I or the other people in the community there for tips. And let's all play Shadowgate together. Yeah, there was legitimately a time where he messaged me on, on Facebook and he was like, hey, I'm playing Shadowgate and um, I'm at this point. Like, can I get back? Am I stuck if I do this? And I was like, no, you're good. You're yeah, good. Yeah. Like exactly how we uh, yeah. actually simulated in that mm -hmm. Discord chat. Like yeah. that actually happened. And we're like, oh, yeah, let's re yeah. recreate that moment. And, you know, it, it'll be nice to have a place to go to get vague tips, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So you're not just like, oh, that was the answer. Because yep. puzzles are fun to figure out on your own, right? Even with a little bit of help. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, sadly, we've re reached the end credits of this show. I want to thank everyone so much for watching us on Twitch listening to us on the podcast and of course supporting us on the patreon yeah you can listen to us on all of uh, the standard podcast formats that link for the patreon is patreon.com slash saturday morning gaming show so if you want to support us you can check out what you can get for that there and what we offer and everything yeah and a special shout out to techno Axe for much of the music during the episode and if you have any comments or questions or thoughts on the show we'd love to hear from you 
just shoot us an email at Saturday Morning Gaming Show at gmail.com. Or on our Twitter at Saturday M Gaming. Right. For Saturday Morning Gaming Show, I'm Lobos. And I'm Ryan. We'll see you on August 24th for Shadowgate. <laughs>